Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So my previous video about Delta Force got some buzz around it. There are so many people in the comment section saying that uh, you're not actually bringing up any facts for your critics. You're just jumping from uh, one place to another and you're just criticizing the Delta Force for no reason. And the reason for that is simply because the open beta is exactly the same as the PC alpha test and uh, nothing has changed. I've brought up my facts about Delta Force two months ago for the PC alpha test and I was imagining that things will change in the open beta, but that didn't happen. But it doesn't matter. For those of you who haven't played the PC Alpha Test and you're hopping up into the game uh, for the first time in this open beta, I'm gonna give you the top five issues that I do believe Delta Force is facing right now. And it's gonna be uh, like game changer. It's gonna be deal breaker for this game. If the devs are not going to at least partially fix these five issues, uh, this game's gonna be doomed. And I hope videos like this actually have an impact on them because in this time period uh, from the alpha test to the beta test Nothing really happened. So I hope they actually do something for the release without uh, wasting any more time Let's jump straight into the video and see what's going on So the first issue that I really want to talk about and this is something that I really have a lot of problems with in Delta Force is operators This game is built around them. This is not cool to say but for a game uh, with big maps like big scales 64 players and all building everything around a bunch of operators is not ideal and that goes back basically to the mindset of developers and people who were trying to market this game as like a battle competitor that take in and out itself is incorrect in my opinion but this game shouldn't have been a hero shooter and unfortunately it is a hero shooter right now it's unimaginable how this game is so obsessed with the operators and uh, it's it's really ridiculous but some people when you call delta force a hero shooter some people get triggered i don't know why but open your eyes and you're gonna see that this game is again this is something that i've always said you guys probably heard this a lot for a specific throwable you need to go and pick a specific operator like if you want to frag grenade you're gonna have to pick an operator. If you want a smoke grenade, there's literally a specific operator for that. If you wanna play a weapon, for like, for example, an SMG, you have to play a specific operator. But if you want another SMG, then there is another operator that you should play. That's obviously a big issue in this game. And I believe the, the issue is so fundamental that they can't even change it anymore. It's like removing specialists from Battlefield 2042. What's gonna be left of it? It's, it's like that. The game is built around them and they literally can't do anything about it. But there are things that they can do to actually reduce the effects of this wrong mindset. I'm not gonna say that they should let every single operator to play every single weapon in the game, uh, but they can at least extend uh, that weapon capacity for operators. Um, they should completely uh, give every single operator every single throwable in the game. There's no exception for this. They should do that. And those like special abilities, like, like wall hack, I mean, come on. They call it a scan or something, but it's literally just a wall hack. You can see people from behind the walls. Uh, the element of surprise goes completely out of the equation. So many times you can't even flank. That is like a basic, simple thing in almost any shooting game. Thanks to a specific operator, you can't even do that now in Delta Force. And when you want to tell people these things in like under a minute, because you have like a time limitation in your video, they go ahead and say, yo, you don't have any facts. You're not uh, you're not saying anything specific or you're not bringing up uh, the issues. You're not giving the solutions. This is it. I'm giving as much solutions as possible. Like there are things that should change and they should actually act upon this immediately. There has to be some changes, some positive changes towards uh, making this game a less hero shooter because it's for, at this point, in my opinion, it's just beyond saving. But yeah, let's move on. The next thing that, in my opinion, makes a lot of problem for this game lies in weapons and gunplay. Um, there are so many issues uh, with gunplay that can't really be discussed. You have to play the game to actually understand them. But there's something we can actually go ahead and discuss, and that is uh, called damage drop-off for distance. So as a Battlefield player, if you're watching this, you are completely familiar with this concept. Like, the more your bullet travels, the less damage it deals. That's a that's the basic uh, concept of damage drop off per distance. But in Delta Force, it's ridiculously overpowered and it's overkill. It doesn't need to be that much. Like the AKS-74 is probably one of the strongest weapon in the game, and that weapon can't even do anything in beyond like 50 meters. Like we we as Battlefield players, we do know what tap firing is, but even tap firing can't save you if you're 
bullets are like dealing 10 damage and like 60 meters. Tap firing can't save you anymore. And you have to basically mag dump someone from like 50, 60 meters to be able to get a kill. At some points in, in my gunplay, I just completely uh, forget about it. Oh, come on, that dude is like 50 meters away. Why even bother? And just forget about it. Knowing very well that what tap firing is and how can I utilize it, but I do know for a fact that it doesn't really work. Even in Battlefield 2042, where guns are pretty much lasers, tap firing still works. In a lot of situations, tap firing is actually superior still to like going full auto, especially in a game like Battlefield 2042, uh, which is known for having laser guns. So this is something that devs really have to take care of. You don't need to go so overkill with damage drop off. Uh, that is something to consider. Another thing about the weapons is ha like having too much weapon recoil or uh, it's not weapon recoil itself. It's like visual recoil. It's, it's just too much. And for being able to have a stable weapon, you literally have to unlock every single attachment. Uh, grab the best parts and put them all together to be able to shoot properly with a weapon without your visual recoil going all over the place. That is something that uh, should be taken care of because the visual recoil on a stock weapon is overkill. It's going to be decreased dramatically with right attachments. But until you get there, you're going to be like literally disappointed in in the game and in yourself. In my opinion, that is something that has to be taken care of. The visual recoil should not be that much. If they want to have a realistic approach, that is not even realistic. If they want to consider the fun aspect that kills the fun, there's literally no logical reason behind it to have something so overpowered in the game. Moving on to the next point here, in my opinion, the map design of this game uh, has already some serious issues. And one of them is the exact issue that 2042 had back in the day, and it still has to this day. Like in Battlefield 2042, the maps have little to no cover in most of their areas, and there's like an open terrain without anything to take cover, and you just have to like push through a open terrain without any cover, and you're being shot at from every single direction. That's something that Battlefield 2042 has in almost any given map. But considering that 2042 was marketed as a battlefield with the capability of having 128 players in every map, at least DICE has some sort of excuse for this. They were trying to make some bigger maps for like a bigger audience. But Delta Force devs are nowhere near that excuse. Okay, the map ascension has literally zero cover. I'm being shot at from like 200 meters away. I don't even know where that shots are coming from, but they're they're basically killing me and there is literally no way I can go. There's also a, a slight flinch to it when you're being shot at, you, you, you can't run as fast. That completely takes away the ability to defend yourself and you're completely out there without uh, any cover, without any ability to defend yourself and you're gonna die. That happens a lot and you, you really have to play carefully in Delta Force and that's something that is not a heritage part of a arcade game. In an arcade game, you have to be able to run fast, uh, go from cover to cover, uh, be able to take risks. Sometimes you need to take a lot of big risks to be able to get a flank, like a good flank, to make the enemy team go back and make your team actually push forward. There are things like that that can't be done in like a map like Ascension. And, and when the game releases and we have like four, five maps like Ascension, the same thing that happened to 2042 will happen to Delta Force as well. These guys have to rework every single map. That's something that DICE did. They actually reworked every single map in 2042 just to make them slightly playable. And that's something that uh, Delta Force devs can actually prevent from happening if they actually uh, try to rethink what they are doing to their maps. And instead of trying to uh, copy other shooting games, be able to design things on their own and have a clear mindset of what they want to do with those maps. That is very important. And I'm saying this because I don't want to see this happening to Delta Force, something that happened to Battlefield 2042. And DICE paid a big price for it. Reworking every single map in a game is, is like a freaking headache, but they had to do it. And that can actually happen to Delta Force devs if they don't open their eyes. Next point here is vehicle design. I don't want to uh, like speak a lot about this. So, so many people say that vehicles are too overpowered. I'm not really on their boat. I do believe the vehicles in Delta Force have minor issues. Like if they're suddenly removed from the game, no one will ever notice except for those vehicle players. Because I've never seen like a vehicle having like a major impact in capturing a site or anything. If that's the case, then why are they even there? If they're not going to do anything, you can basically do two main things as developers. You can make them 
or impactful, it's like improve their abilities and stuff like that, then you can basically remove them from the game if the impact is so minor. Now, you might want to attack me for saying this, but it is, it is as simple as that. If there is something with minor impact on the game, you either upgrade the abilities to make it have a bigger impact or you're just gonna remove it from the game. I mean, if the vehicles are going to stay the same uh, in, in the main release of the game, it's not gonna be cool. And also the controls on, the, on those vehicles is like nowhere near anything like Battlefield. It's not as smooth, it's not as easy to control. And uh, that is also something to consider. It has to be user-friendly, a vehicle. And the final thing I wanna talk about, which is, in my opinion, the number one priority of the community, especially because this game is a free-to-play game, is the cheating issue. Now, there's always a risk factor when uh, someone goes down the cheating route, like if someone tries to cheat in like a game like Call of Duty or Battlefield, uh, that dude is taking a risk because they might have their account banned, and they have to pay for the game for another account and those kind of stuff. And Delta Force, that's not the case because the game is free to play. All that dude has to do is to make another Steam account and they're in the game. That's it. And because of that, Delta Force devs have a very harder job to do in order to stop these people from cheating. And with the current state of cheating in the world, like there are so many shooting games that are dealing with this issue every single day. Games like Rainbow Six Siege, games like Battlefield. Call of Duty. There are like big companies actually creating these cheats. You have monthly subscriptions. So it gets really harder for anyone to be able to go against them because they have a lot of money. Uh, they have big resources. They have the manpower to actually go and do whatever they want with a game, with an online game. And it's really hard to go against them even for like AAA companies like EA. Now I'm not a smart tech specialist to uh, give these guys some advices on how to do this, but I know for a fact that the community is really concerned about this. Uh, I've seen cheaters in the open beta, I've seen cheaters in the PC alpha test, and I'm pretty sure that I'm going to see cheaters in the upcoming release of the game. That is for sure. These guys have to do something about it, and if they don't, uh, then it's going to be a paradise for cheaters because there is literally uh, nothing stopping them from coming back into the game. Unless they actually ban cheaters like uh, from their hardware ID, doing things like that, which in my opinion is a great way. Someone who cheats uh, ha should not be able to step foot in that game again. If they are detected in their ban, they should be banned for good and once and for all. So I really gotta tell you that I'm all in for that. If they wanna do that, like a motherboard, kind of ID or stuff, stuff like that. I, I know for a fact that devs can actually do that. And if they want to do it, I'm I'm one of the first people who will congrat them. So go down in the comment section. Let me know what you think about these five points. Let me know if these facts are enough for you guys to actually know where I'm coming from. I'm not actually the enemy of this game. I'm just trying to uh, expose what DICE did with 2042 and what went wrong with 2042. So the Delta Force devs don't go down that route and things will be easier for them. Because the resources that DICE and EA had, these guys don't have. If they make like fatal mistakes, it's going to be the death of the Titan. And that's not something I want to see. Hope you guys enjoyed and hope this was helpful. And also thanks for watching. Until next time, guys. Stay cool.